So let us begin with a little bit of recapitulation of what we have been doing. Uh, what we have done is define this external force method. So for the case of harmonic oscillator, we defined um, in the Dirac picture to be equal to integral well actually we did only uh, so we did configuration space This would be the usual Lagrangian and to this we add so this introduction of f is essentially a trick okay in the presence of f uh, it looks like this because q's are going to get integrated out so there will be no functional dependence left so j is the bookkeeping function that will keep track of what is happening and when we do th then we do one more modification which is that change to vacuum to vacuum so I will just skip two uh, things together and then for vacuum to vacuum amplitudes which we call W of J of uh, F here which is uh, this uh, XF infinity x i minus infinity in the presence of this f as equal to you know you have to insert x f infinity uh, x f t f and so on. So you can carry this out uh, uh, advance from any finite time t f to infinity on both sides. So after all of that is done it becomes w0 times that fdf so it becomes the same as w you would have obtained with uh, you know shifted values of q but you just get usual w but then e raised to i times and then this integral dt dt prime f of t d of t minus t prime f of t prime where d becomes the Feynman propagator is equal to <coughs> in this language what is it theta of t minus t prime um, e raise to minus i omega t is that right omega t minus t prime and plus theta of t prime minus t e raise to plus i omega t minus t prime uh, 1 by 2 is e here correct. Now this whole thing just carries over to field theory 
where instead of t we have x, y, z and t. So, in, in q f t we will have w of j where now j is function of x which is the so called vacuum to vacuum amplitude. and that has the form w of 0 times e raise to i over 2 and integral d 4 x and now this we wrote in terms of uh, in momentum space probably directly yeah we wrote in terms of d 4 p. So, minus i over 2 is there a minus sign here also probably. So, minus i over 2, but now we write this in momentum space for ease. I will just explain quickly what happens. So, then it is d 4 p and then j tilde of p j tilde of minus p divided by p square minus m square plus i epsilon where the Fourier transform uh, for any function. So, j tilde p is with defined with e raise to minus i p x. So, this is very similar to this, we could have written d 4 x d 4 x prime that check that integral d 4 x d 4 x prime uh, j of x and then delta Feynman x minus x prime and then j of x prime becomes equal to this uh, sorry d 4 that j tilde p ok. So, that is same form as this just that it is converted to this. The important property we use is that the Feynman propagator is function only of the difference of the arguments. So, there is translation invariance. So, in 2 x x's are not really required 1 p is enough in the momentum space ok. So, there is a delta function. So, uses translation invariance. So, this is the sort of starting point of the next part and then we had said that any Green's function can be defined. So, which is um, actually So, Ramon does not somehow write this t product definition, but I think that is what it has to be. So, g n of x 1 x 2 g we call this now that becomes how do you evaluate the t product of these things? Well, we know that that is equal to uh, integral of d phi e raise to i s of phi and plus i integral j phi 
and then these insertions That, so, this is actually same as this, this this you know this is the definition if you like, uh, uh, we know that if in the path integral if you insert certain operators you will automatically get the uh, expectation value of the t product between these endpoints, but that is what we are calling Green's function now, but clearly this can then be got by using this trick, by using this expression because all we have to do is vary with respect to i times j. So, this is equal to uh, 1 over i times variation with respect to x 1 of the simple amplitude. in presence of j and uh, I have to put this because this has no j in it. So, after doing this one evaluates it at j equal to 0. So, this is j but evaluated at j equal to 0. This amplitude will not contain any phi's, this amplitude is this, this right. It does not contain any phi because phi got integrated out, but there is a j dependence. So, if I vary this with respect to j, it will bring down a phi at x1, it will bring down a phi. So, I can populate this numerator by the required operators by acting by d by dj on this, right? Very standard trick for generating functions. And so, this is what we finally say is our Green's function, g n is this. So, so, this is how far we got and then we want to, uh, so we check then that this uh, delta f emerges more or less automatically. If you start with the free theory, uh, the free just as we started here with the uh, the harmonic oscillator which serves as a um, emblem for what is the word, which, uh, it is emblematic of the uh, somewhere where we wrote S right. So, it is the free propagator. square phi square. So, that looks very much like half q dot square plus half omega square q square because this is half phi dot square minus half d by d, d phi by dx square right the Laplacian square. So, this is what the free propag free action is and from that we generate this delta Feynman which we can check satisfies uh, which works as Green's function of the classical differential equation. Here Green's function in the traditional sense, no quantum mechanics, just in the partial differential equation. Green's function of the PDE and by the conventions that Ramon uses it is equal to minus delta 4. So, this can also be checked. So, you can just 
see that that is what that is exactly what you get. So far so good. Now we can do a very simple calculation uh, in this particular case. So uh, for the free theory there are no interactions just the Klein Gordon. is that if I calculate G2, so G1 will be 0 right because if I vary with respect to G what have a J, so G1 will be equal to 1 over I D by DJ of this WJ, but that will be equal to be evaluated at J equal to 0, but that will bring down uh, when I vary with respect to J. I am left with a delta and a j right. So, we are left with because this is in the exponent this whole thing is in the exponent if you vary this w of j with respect to j well we should write in real space. So, this, these two are same right. So, this is same as this. So, if I vary with respect to this I will bring down this remainder piece down uh, with a d 4 x prime. Okay. But I have to evaluate it at j equal to 0. So, while w of j equal to 0 is some sensible answer uh, of the free of the free un, unforced theory this j is going to make it equal to 0. So, this equal to 0 right at j equal to 0. So, our next hope is that we calculate g 2 oh not 1 sorry but del variation. So, that then exactly produces the propagator. because I varied with respect to first j this will come down then I vary with respect to second j that will get cancelled and this delta times this w will remain and then of course you will also have j acting on this w itself but that term will go to 0 for the same reason that this first term went to 0 here and the only term that remains non 0 when you send j to 0 is this one. Uh, aside from the w of uh, 0 itself which should be really factored out. Okay. And there is a minus sign in the exponent right. So, that is why there is no minus sign yeah this has yeah there is this minus sign. So, when you vary you would have had that minus sign over here. So, when you vary second time and you get a i to come down. So, you are varying with respect to i in the denominator to cancel that i, but when you do it the second time there will be a i in the denominator which will go to numerator with that minus sign it will become plus i. So, now we calculate delta of the g 4 by the same method. So, we can see that g 3 has to be 0 any odd g now the 
Okay, so the point of doing this exercise is that we begin to see the particle interpretation of this big formalism. We have plugged in a field uh, phi into the action, but what we come up with, where did we write the Lagrangian here? So we are dealing with a field theory, but after we do this endpoint function, we eventually come out with a particle like interpretation because we already have this G2 which is the Feynman propagator which as you know from your quantum 3 has basically this kind of behavior. It propagates positive frequency particles forward, negative frequency particles backwards. So one often draws this G2 as a line joining the points x1 and x2, create a particle here, destroy it there or destroy an antiparticle there and create it here. We will do it in a minute, but just to tell you in advance why we are doing this. So we are doing this to see that the particle like interpretation emerges automatically from the Green's functions of this theory. So G4 then is going to be, uh, you can see actually what happens if I vary with a very four times, the point is that I f when I vary with first two of the arguments, I will get a delta f down. When I vary with the next j, these things cannot give any contribution. So again more uh, deltas have to be brought down from the exponent of w. So what will happen is that I will get i times delta f x1 minus x2 and i times delta f times x3 minus x4, right. This is the only, I mean this is the, there are two other terms of this kind, but essentially you get pairwise products. You cannot get anything new from the, what comes down already, what comes down in the uh, numerator or the main uh, x line because you can vary it only twice and that just produces a delta. The next non-trivial answers come when you vary again twice, one more delta comes down except that all the orderings are possible. So you can get this plus i times delta x1, so um, since you are going to differentiate with respect to all the four and set j equal to 0 in the end temporarily you can get various combinations down. So you will also have this so all the permutations happen. This is happening because we have a free theory, there are no interactions, okay. So no complicated connections between these lines get generated, but what we do is we represent this diagrammatically. So when you do d by dj1, let us say, you will bring down uh, an integral delta. Now you all you know is you have a d4 x prime x1 minus x prime times j of x prime and times the w of j. When you vary twice, and have not set j equal to zero, you could end up with d4 x double prime delta of x2 minus x double prime integral d4 x prime <coughs> delta of x1 minus x prime times w, right, and the j's of course, the jx.
and so on. So, you next you do d by dj3. The point is when I now hit with a dj3, uh, so at this point itself, I have two possibilities. One is this, where this has come down from the exponent or the j2 could just hit this. So, I will have this plus simply delta x2 minus x1 times w. So, both the terms occur when I do this, but of course, this term would get set to 0 if I set j equal to 0, but now I am going to act with more j's. Now, those j's can remove this or this or bring down a more j and so on. So, in the end you end up with all the combinations like this. Okay. So, this is also an exercise, just check this in detail, exercise 2. <coughs> so, the G2 we interpret simply as um, <coughs> creation of a particle at x1 and going to x2. So, I will write it like this particle with T2 greater than T1. Or like this antiparticle, if T1 is greater than T2. So, that is the detailed interpretation of this. I mean, this is what the Feynman propagator actually gives, and we think of it as a particle being created here and transported there, or uh, an antiparticle created at uh, T1 and sent to T2. Okay. Then the G4 has the interpretation that it is equal to x1, x2 times, so there is a cross between the two, x3, x4. So, these amplitudes are just multiplied to each other, the two product of the two deltas plus sign. So, this plus sign is in the sense of linear superposition. So, in quantum mechanics, this four point amplitude is a sum of three possible ways it can happen with equal weightage. So, either x 1 goes to x 2 and x 3 goes to x 4 or x 1 goes to x 3 and x 2 goes to x 4 or x 1 goes to x 4 and x 2 goes to x 3. Now, there is one advanced lesson here, which uh, the book does not spend time explaining at this point, but he just drops the answer. And uh, I have also chosen to postpone it, because we have not done interacting theory, any interacting theory yet. But the point is that the fact that we come out with this kind of a combinatoric answer, sum of various products of some more basic Green's functions. So, what has happened is this of course, we already saw. But the more interesting remark is that G4 is simply linear combination of products of G2. In fact, in a free theory, it is somewhat boring. 
even if you do G56 you will only get products of two point functions because there is nothing else that can happen. So due to this being a free theory all higher G2M will be sums of products of MG2s. It can be shown that the combinatorics of it works out correctly. So in the more general case, new irreducible vertices however <coughs> we still get this products of the lower Green's functions anyway in the higher one. this redundancy uh, of seeing the lower ordered ones appear in higher order ones uh, can be removed by a very clever trick and that trick is that you uh, look at that that you take a log of this the way these are uh, the combinatoric factor comes out exactly correct so that so let me write 3a and 3b so due to b If you do this then because there is an exponent of whatever is z there will be various uh, powers of the terms of z which will get multiplied among each other to produce w in exactly the same way that the lower ordered Green's functions multiply to produce higher order ones. Okay. So the it can be shown that so this will be done in the future. So it can be shown that uh, Z J is the generating functional of the connected diagrams.
So, this is one diagram. So, the, this G4 is sum of three diagrams, but this diagram is disconnected because it has some two parties not talking to the other two. It is like it has fallen into. So, this is a disconnected diagram, this is disconnected. But one can show that if you take if you take the log of W, which is this Z, then you get only the connected ones. And when you exponentiate this connected diagram generating function, then you will generate all the product pieces in exactly such a way as to get the uh, W with products of lower order diagrams multiplying it. So, in our case it is somewhat obvious. So, in the simple case, So, free theory, we already see this because w of j equal to w 0 times e raise to minus i times uh, z with z equal to, I have to return that one half factor one half integral j j tilde j tilde so or well one half d 4 x 1 d 4 x 2 right. I should use uh, Ramon's notation, but may as well write down everything. So, j x 1 delta f x 1 minus x 2, but this we already know is G 2. And we know that exponentiating just G 2 is going to produce the W. So, so, Z this log of W in the case of the free field theory is simply in simple language it is equal to 1 half J G 2 J. that is all there is. And because it is a free theory, that is the only non-trivial diagram you have. And its exponentiation will generate all the possible diagrams of W. Okay. But when you have non-trivial physics going on, then you will find newer uh, G's at a higher level. And that is the aim of my part of the uh, this set of lectures to show that that is what we get. But we will go be going through a few more things in between. So, now we introduced the uh, Green's function last time. Uh, one last comment about this is that uh, there is a momentum space version of this business of connected and uh, I should tell you that I am giving you a only a preliminary discussion this discussion goes better, can get better and better as you spend more time. Uh, 